Up with Crim begins now. Well, after early season snow, many are wondering what it means for the upcoming months. This morning, we are breaking down the climate patterns that point to a winter wild card. And right now, the view outside is showing dry skies. But when will those showers arrive and for how long will they last? I'll have an answer in just a bit. Last night, 12 presidential candidates racing for the White House took the stage. And this morning, we are fact checking the fourth Democratic presidential debate. Well, Chevy Chase is coming to Spokane. He is hosting a screening of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It is set for Black Friday, November 29th. So Chevy Chase himself is inviting the people of Spokane to watch the movie with him. And after the show, he will have a Q&A. Tickets will go on sale this Friday. And I know someone in between Dana Marie and I who already plans on basically buying the whole theater. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. I can quote it from front to back. It's oh so gosh, funny. Well, when fun. we yeah. got this He's announcement coming. yesterday, Jen and Laura Papetti both were going crazy. <laughs> They basically wanted the whole noon show yesterday to be about Chevy Chase. Well, we're the same person in the sense <laughs> that we can go back and forth and just quote scenes to each other right. without having to watch it. And we still crack ourselves up about it. Now, I still have never seen Christmas Vacation. Travesty. I know. And it, I've been told that. What? So I really, I want to go, but Laura Papetti promised if we can't get tickets, that we will be invited to her home to watch it. For a oh. showing. Have you seen it? <laughs> a private showing. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Of course. At least two of us have here. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> if we can invite Chevy Chase here to Laura's house, I'm sure, oh, I'm sure he would love that invite. That. I just think we need to have a, a winter Christmas movie series. I kind love of thing. that. Yay. We could just rotate from all yes. of our places. Maybe okay. we'll have one in the studio. If it's Laura Papetti involved, it's all year round in her house. <laughs> Agreed. So we could probably kick that off now. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> along with the Christmas music. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right, here it's 532 now. Evan, the winter weather, not quite here today, but starting to feel a little more like fall. That's right. Finally, that fall weather coming uh, into play. We are dealing with overnight lows in the mid 40s, which is welcome news. And we're talking afternoon highs in about the lows to mid 60s. So that also is welcome news as opposed to teens overnight and 30s or 40s in the afternoon. Now we will be moving toward that weather pattern as the weekend comes around. We've got much cooler temperatures on the way, but as we start off your Wednesday, here's what's going on outside. Satellite radar indicating a few very light showers that are popping up. Otherwise, though, in Spokane and Kootenai County, notice that dry area. We're seeing uh, just cloudy conditions outside, but what we are anticipating is the first of two separate, very large waves of moisture coming our way. First one right off the Pacific that is slowly kind of just moving inland. West side of the state picking up on plenty of showers right now. Those showers will come our way by the overnight hours. The next system will be in our direction by Saturday. That is going to likely bring some pretty intense rain into the weekend. 12 hour forecast though, as I mentioned, keeps us dry. Most of the inland northwest will not be seeing those showers start up until late tonight into tomorrow. You can see that 20% chance of showers that pops up by 5 and 6 p.m. We do have clouds that will carry on through most of the day, but temperatures otherwise warming up to the low to mid 60s this afternoon. Jen. Evan, thank you. All police do not have any leads in the search for a missing Spokane teenager. They say Sarah McNeese has not been seen or heard from in more than one week. Officers found a note in her car indicating she left with her boyfriend. A family spokesperson says the note, though, was not in her handwriting. Last week, her family pleaded publicly for her to come home. Sarah, if you are listening, please come home. You are not in trouble. You are loved. We just want you safe. Please come home. McNeese's family says Sarah has special needs and they strongly believe she needs help. If you have any information on the case, you are asked to call the number on your screen. This morning, extra police officers will be at Deer Park High School. District leaders say a threat on social media targeted students. Spokane County Sheriff's Office leaders say the threat originated outside of Deer Park and they're now working to identify the person or persons behind the threat. They add the threat they don't believe is credible, but extra patrols were added as a precaution. The Lewiston School District is investigating recent reports of racism. According to some parents, students have been the targets of racially motivated harassment inside and outside school. District leaders talked about the incidents during a meeting this week. They say it was the first time they had heard the complaints and now they're vowing to take action. Since that meeting, staff reached out to parents, school resource officers and principals to investigate. 
The man accused of killing a three-year-old Idaho girl is mentally fit to stand trial. A judge ruled Timmy Kinner rather is unfit to stand trial in Ada County. He is accused of attacking five children and three adults during a birthday party. Prosecutors say he did not know any of the victims. Well, that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with creme. 536 now 12 Democratic candidates took the stage in the fourth Democratic debate of 2019. And like the last three debates, we had our Verify team working to analyze the claims. They work to separate fact from fiction. Here's our Jason Puckett. We have a write up with claims from almost all the candidates on our website. Right now, we're focusing on claims from the top two candidates in the polls, and that's Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. I would not have withdrawn the troops, and I would not have drawn the additional thousand troops who are in Iraq, which are in retreat now, being fired on by, a shot, by Assad's people. We're looking at the part of that claim that our U.S. troops are being fired on by Assad's people. That claim is false. U.S. troops in Syria were pulled back by President Trump earlier this month, and Syrian President Bashar al-Assad did move his troops into the region. But there have been no reports or claims that the U.S. US troops were fired on by the Syrian troops. It's not clear if the VP misspoke or got his facts jumbled up here, since he also mentioned that this was in Iraq instead of Syria. Two out of every three families that ended up in bankruptcy after a serious medical problem had health insurance. This claim is misleading. Studies like this one in the American Journal of Public Health do show that roughly 66% of bankruptcies in the US could be tied to medical reasons. And they did say that one of the major causes was insurance plans that wouldn't cover the family's full costs. So yeah, there's two facts here. Two thirds of bankruptcies are linked to medical costs and many of those people did have insurance. But Warren kind of combined those two facts into one and said that two thirds of all bankruptcies are from families with medical costs who had insurance. And that's not what the studies say. Again, folks, that's just a few of the many claims. This was a three hour debate and there's a lot more of what was said on our website and articles from the past debates as well. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Thank you, Jason. And thanks for waking up with Creme this morning. It's time for your speed feed stories you'll see on social media. Gamers, listen up. Fortnite is back with Chapter 2 and a new map. After a black hole took the game down worldwide, the game has a refreshed look and new ways to level up. Epic Fortnite's game developer took the game offline between 4 and 6 a.m. Tuesday to update the game. And I'm sure if you're an avid Fortnite player, you already know it's back up. We'll take a look at these adorable dogs dressed up ready for Halloween. Well, people are responding to tweets asking in six words or fewer, write a story about this photo. Some of the best answers are cast of Hocus Pocus 2 or turn our human into a toad. And my favorite, the cat was never seen again. Now give us your best six word story by heading to our Up With Creme Facebook page. I'll be posting that photo there and we can share it on our speak feed this morning. And lastly, a Grease spinoff is coming to HBO's streaming service. Grease Right El High is a weekly musical series that takes place in the 1950s and includes original Grease characters along with a couple new ones. But the reactions on Twitter are pretty skeptical. People are concerned that it won't add up to the original and that it's better to just, you know, leave those classics alone. And others are using GIFs, you know, I just won't accept that. A premiere date has been released yet for, uh, it hasn't been released yet for another show, but if you are a Grease fan, a new real movie, a prequel is coming called Summer Lovin'. It's had, set to hit the big screen, so I'm excited about that. Are you guys Grease fans? Oh, totally. Of the OG Grease. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I actually, I was okay with Grease Live. I don't think the reviews were very stellar when they did that. Uh, kind of like a live mm -hmm. show. Um, yeah. But uh, sometimes I think you gotta keep the classics as the classics. Well, and that's what a lot of people on social media were responding to, like leave it alone, just give our classics a breather here. Don't make all these remakes, but I think the Summer Love and Prequel will be cute. Yeah. yeah. I'm here for it. It sounds like it's just gonna be kind of like Glee. Well, you know, and, like and what else can is, they do with right, it? It doesn't right. look like they're going to have, obviously, any of the original cast. And so <laughs> I think maybe if we were able to do something that involved the original cast, then, I mean, obviously they can't still be young and in love, but <laughs> uh, we, I think there still is a way to incorporate them. And so I think oftentimes yeah. when you have a brand new cast that no one knows, people mm. are, or, and on a different, you know, HBO that didn't do the original, people get a little bit, 
worked up. Yeah. <laughs> HBO series are always usually pretty good, though. They are. That's what I'm so, thinking. Yeah. So I love the music. Yeah. I'm willing I know, to give it a shot. ABC Family did a remake of uh, Mean Girls, and uh, it was terrible. <laughs> That's why it we haven't heard about it. Horrendous. Only Evan has. Exactly. <laughs> I made the mistake of watching it. <laughs> All right. 541 now. Dana Marie, thank you so much. Well, this morning we are talking about state leaders changing high school graduation requirements, and we want you to weigh in. Do you think students should have to pass a state test to graduate? Head to the CREM2 app to vote now in our live poll. And the new carousel be that was built is in need of some major repairs. Coming up at 6, how the city is working to preserve one of Spokane's most famous landmarks. And congratulations, Catherine. You just won two Up With CREM coffee mugs and a gift card to... Thomas Hammer Coffee Roasters. Now, if you'd like to win, you could subscribe to the Creme Newsletter or the Up With Creme Facebook page.